Hi guys, it's Cliff here from Down Under, um, carrying on with this series BT30 versus R8 TTS spindle tapers and all the various aspects of it. Um, carry on with part two. Thank you, cheers. So in the last video, I talked about the taper diameter um, of R8 and BT30 being very similar. Um, here they're about 32. And what I didn't go into, I was sort of glossing over it a bit, is that all that's all things being equal, you get a pretty similar stiffness. This is a um, cutter holder with a universal 30 taper, which is the same as a BT30 taper. And this is an R8 cutter holder. Um, so this is not a TTS system, this is an R8 cutter holder. And you can buy these online quite cheaply, they're mass produced. Um, I actually made this one myself, um, but you know you can buy the same sort of thing, an ER20 um, or an ER2532 cutter holder with an R8 solid shank on it. So that's not using um, collets, that's just a solid shank. And that's a fair comparison between ER, uh, sorry, between R8 and BT30. And they are pretty similar in terms of stiffness. But here's one online of what it looks like. They're quite low cost and they're of similar strength and construction, an R8 ER holder to a BT ER holder. But there are other, other factors to consider. I'm just trying to sort of put it all together in a concise couple of videos uh, where I can. So, so, one of the diff so the other thing to consider or to, to understand is that a BT system is generally designed to be used with pull studs that's an insert screwed in here um, and but you can make up your own and probably buy online a threaded insert which allows it to be used uh, with a drawbar uh, so that's what i've done i couldn't buy a bt uh, a universal taper 30 er system so i got a bt one and i uh, machined up my own insert so i could use it with a drawbar my machine actually is a universal 30 taper which has a built-in drawbar thread. It doesn't suit uh, a pull stud for an automatic tool changer. So <laughs> there's a lot of variables here. Um, in fact, what I found was the most rigid system for my tool mark with an R8 uh, collet system is to have a three-quarter inch shank carbide two, two insert end mill and I couldn't buy one that size so I machined this up it's a high tensile steel three quarter inch shank that goes straight in to the R8 collet and grips straight up inside the spindle now that is more more rigid than the TTS system because although it doesn't have the flange to support on the end of the spindle it's a much bigger cutter and in that sort of size cutter you'd be getting a uh, TTS pull out meltdown situation anyway, so it, it, it's beyond the scope of TTS to hold a three quarter inch cutter and take massive cuts. I mean, when I say massive, for for a little machine like an 1100, this is the most rigid system I can come up with for for machining out big amounts of metal. You know, like when you're really hoeing into it here. Um, big lumps of tool steel, big cavities, and doing some serious metal removal, um, you want to have the maximum stiffness of cutter and the maximum grip in the spindle. And so this three quarter inch cutter was straight into the R8 was the best way to go. Now, would that have been better in a 30 international taper? Well, probably not because look at the projection length. And that's another thing to consider. The spindle is at this point. The projection length from the spindle bearings is very small. In an R8 holder, um, you're coming right out a long way beyond the spindle bearings. You're getting a lot more flex. So another thing to consider is how close will your cutter holder system get your cutter to the spindle bearings and so minimize tool flex. Okay, so if you're having trouble with your... Uh, say half inch or 12 mil TTS, you're at the point of breakdown, you can't stop it from chattering and pulling out, 
then you can go straight into an R8 collet that size and then your spindle is there and you're getting much less projection and you're not going to get this TTS uh, levering off the flange system so you have a double advantage you're, you're beyond for example with a big cutter you might be beyond the, the, the range that TTS can handle so you go to a grip in an R8 collet system and also you're not getting the leverage effect and you're getting much less tool length projection that's that's the relative position there so um, you can see there that the cutter is in much closer to the spindle bearings the spindle bearings are up here and the spindle bearings are up there so look at the difference there it's a huge difference between there and there so the projection has a big effect on tool stiffness and uh, the play in the bearings and the flex of the tool and the run out of the cutter holders and so on all have an effect. The further they're out, the worse it gets. So if you can get your cutter in close to the spindle bearings, it's a big advantage. So there's so many factors to consider here. You've got to look at them all and see how it relates to the type of work you're doing now and the type of work you plan to do in the future. On the subject of keying the taper and the drive dogs on the 30 BP taper, let's have a look at this uh, Wikipedia on R8. This taper was designed by Bridgeport Machines for use on its milling machines. R8 tapers are not self-holding, so they require a drawbar extending up through the spindle to the top of the machine to prevent loosening when lateral forces are encountered. They are keyed to prevent rotation during insertion and removal, although it is the taper that transmits torque in use. So that tiny little key and key way that you see in the R8 is really only to uh, prevent rotation during insertion and removal. That angle of taper, which is essentially the same as the BT taper, is sufficient friction when it's tightened up correctly to hold against the torque of the milling action. And so the big dry drive dogs on the BT30 are probably uh, overkill. They're understandable on a big mill, which has got 15 or 20 horsepower uh, on a big 40 uh, BT40. You do need drive dogs for that. But on a BT30, you probably don't need those big drive dogs. Uh, unfortunately, they're part of the package. Um, and you have to then have spindle orientation to align them. And that small key that's used to aid the uh, tightening and loosening of the R8 probably isn't essential either. In the BT30 collet that I made, there's no key to prevent it from rotating, and yet I found in practice when you tighten it up, uh, the friction is enough to allow tightening and to transmit the torque. So it's a little bit of an unnecessary luxury having that drive key and the necessary spindle orientation. So you can see that the R8 system is very universal. I think it, it was, it's used commonly on Bridgeport machines and it gives you a lot of low cost options. You can use um, R8 collets and there's a big range available at a low cost and you can hold your cutters directly in the spindle. You can have a 3 quarter inch TTS collet and hold your TTS cutter holders in the spindle that way and pull up on the flange on the bottom of the spindle and for small diameter cutters is very rigid and a low cost system. Or you can buy a dedicated uh, R8 cutter holders with uh, ER collets in them or flatted shank grub screw type or, or whatever system you want to use go straight into the R8 in a similar system to the BT type taper. So the R8 system is very universal, gives you a big range of options. Probably if you're going to be using a manual threaded drawbar uh, and you want a versatile jobbing shop that can hold cutters a lot of different ways, that's a really good option. If you want to use a tool changer, you probably want to think seriously about the BT system with the pull stud, uh, but it is a lot less versatile. You don't have the ability to have collets or a TTS system. Now this is where it gets interesting. As far as I know you don't, I haven't been able to find anything online 
I haven't been able to find a BT30 or a Universal 30 taper collet system. I made this one up and I've been designing other designs. Um, if you people know of a supplier who manufactures BT30 collets um, for TTS or just a range of collets, please let me know in the comments. Um, there may be somebody out there producing them. There are problems to be solved with that approach. It isn't cut and dried, it isn't straightforward. Um, but I don't want to reinvent the wheel. If there's somebody already doing it, please let me know. Uh, as far as I'm aware currently, the BT system is available only as a sort of dedicated tool holder and there is not any collet option available for it. In my last video I talked about having a couple of dedicated TTS holders that don't have a hole through them, that are not tubular, that are solid shank. And this should allow you to grip them more securely and use them for bigger diameter cutters uh, without having the same pull down problems. Um, just but what I meant was um, just take just bore an absolute minimum out of that hole. Um, you may be able to use a reamer um, but the steel is, har is hardened and tempered and it might be it, it's tempered back to a degree that will probably be able to be reamed um, but it might be hard on your reamer. It's probably safer to bore it with a, a very hard boring bar, tungsten carbide or high grade high speed steel. Just bore out a couple of thou so that it's parallel and round and then have a light press fit in steel insert and that way you've got a solid shank that allow you to grip your TTS more securely. Okay so these machine tapers whether they are international taper or BT taper or a CAT or QC or NMTB they're all supposed to be the same taper which is 3.5 inches to the foot or if we do the maths um, that's 0.2917 inches to the inch. So I'll show you a way that we can measure that with a finger indicator. And we're going to use the finger indicator as a comparator, not as an um, absolute measuring device. Because obviously it wouldn't be very accurate for absolute measurement. So I'll just zoom in now. I want you to be able to see the digital readout as well. So I'm going to wind in there deep enough to get me that one inch of travel. Now I'm going to come over until I contact on it. Try not to get my head in front of the camera. Now I'm going to wind it up and down in the Z because I have to find the exact uh, widest point, the diameter point. So you can see there the, the finger indicators coming down the slope finding the maximum diameter and coming back up the other way. So that's the diameter there. Now we're going to come out to zero. Excuse my head for a minute. Well, I won't be able to get this exact, but we're, we're, on, we're on the uh, center line. We're on zero. We'll set our digital readout on zero. Now this is where we come to use it as a comparator. So I'm just checking zero there. Going in that direction, we're on zero. Okay, so now we'll come out one inch, 25.4, and we'll come over and measure, set our dial indicator on zero again. So that's how we're using it as a comparator. I'm getting 3.71. Okay, so 3.5 to the inch. Let's just do the maths here now. You see this, okay, 3.5 uh, divided by 12 equals that times 25.4 equals 70408 for the diameter. So we want a half of that divided by 2 equals 3.704. So that is pretty accurate. And um, what I just did then you know, it was pretty quick because I had my head in front of the camera. I couldn't quite see the dial indicator, but it's still within half a hundredth of a, of a millimeter accurate that taper by those quick measurements. That's within five microns 
of the right angle. So that's one way you can check. If you do it a bit more carefully, you can probably get it more accurately. You can check to see that you have the correct taper in your machine. Because the actual taper really matters. You don't want an error in your internal machine taper or an error on your holder, cutter holder taper um, and, and, it, and it rattles. It's got to be a very accurate match and, and this is what makes it expensive. Um, the internal taper is ground with a very small internal grinding wheel and that's very easy to get wrong and very difficult to get right. The grinding wheel needs to be um, really accurately dressed and, and on center and uh, there's, there's a lot of things you can get wrong internally grinding that taper and even externally grinding uh, the mass produced cutter holder tapers is easy to get wrong. One way you can check that the taper matches on your machine you know, and all the tapers are supposed to be the same, British taper, international taper, 3.5 inches to the foot. But, you know, there may be an error in uh, your holder taper or your machine taper, or there may be some burrs or some dirt or gum in there. Um, you can put a bit of bearing blue inside the taper, a very thin, even layer. Remove the drive dogs and then screw the taper in carefully holding it straight and even and pull it out and have a look at the transfer and see whether or not it's bearing over the full surface. Uh, another method which I've used from time to time and some of you might think is sacrilege is to put a very fine, a very fine grinding paste on the taper and remove the grinding dogs, dogs with a bit of kerosene and lap it. Now you certainly don't want to do that too often or too much but um, it will remove any burrs or gum and give a, a much more uh, reliable, accurate transfer pattern on the surface to show you exactly how well the taper is mating. But, you know, I wouldn't advise using that unless you're familiar with the processes of lapping. You don't want to dis destroy your machine taper. Um, that's a, a very specialized uh, process. And of course you might want to measure your actual holder taper and you can use a similar method to the one outlined in the mill. Um, put it between centers in a lathe and uh, put a dial indicator on it. Use your digital readout to index an inch in the Z and uh, measure the amount in the cross travel and the X. Uh, but with that method in a lathe it's a little bit more critical. You probably want to machine this center to make sure it's perfectly true and run a dial indicator connected to the chuck rotating on this center to make sure it's perfectly in the right place. Otherwise you'll be measuring errors in your lathe setup as well. And also it's a little more difficult to get the dial indicator exactly on the center height. Uh, so that will take a bit of skill to measure your taper between centers. So getting back to this key question, which way should we go? Should we get a BT30 system or stay with the uh, R8 TTS system. Well think forward, think ahead to where you want to end up. Do you want to definitely end up with a tool changer? Okay that narrows it down doesn't it? That means that you either have to stay with TTS and um, because you want to have automatic tool changing um, you're going to have a power drawbar and you're going to have a TTS system or if you go to the, B the BT30 you're going to need a pull stud, uh, the power drawbar and the tool changer for that BT30 machine. You won't really have the option of using a solid R8 holder because that doesn't suit tool changing, uh, automatic tool changing. So that puts that option out. So now you're down to the decision between TTS and BT30. And there's advantages and disadvantages. For big cutters, as explained in the last video, uh, a BT30 is, is going to be uh, a more secure uh, system and you're going to have less problems, less risk of meltdown. 
but you are going to, it's going to be more expensive because the cutter holders are more expensive. You need a machine that has spindle orientation to align the drive dogs. So the tool changer system with the pull stud is going to have to be all set up for that. But if that's what you want in the long run, then BT30 will be an advantage. If you stay with uh, R8 and TTS, you can just maximize its potential to use a cutter with those various improvements that I talked about in the last video. So in summary, if you're unlikely to ever use a tool changer and, auto and have automatic tool changing, then the R8 system with TTS is probably a good option. It gives you a lot of versatility, a lot of low cost options. But if you are sure that long term you want to go to a tool changer and have automatic tool changing, then the BT30 is probably a good option. Um, you just need to be prepared for the greater cost of that. Another thing to consider is that if you've currently got a manual tool changing system, maybe with a power drawbar, uh, but you never actually want to get a, a, a the, go to the expense of a tool changer with spindle orientation because that is a big cost. You know, that's getting on for the cost of another milling machine, a spindle orientation and an automatic tool changer. And you might eventually build a wine rack style tool changer. Then you probably want to stay with TTS and have that low cost versatility. It won't suit um, big cutters and maximum metal removal. If, if you must have big cutters and maximum metal removal and the big, biggest cuts possible then and you're not concerned about the long-term cost then the BT30 system is probably a good option. That is if you're not planning to use your long-term to do automatic machining with a tool changer with big cutters you're going to be using small cutters for the type of work you're planning to do um, then the TTS system is probably going to be adequate. Um, and, and if you do need to do uh, heavy metal removal, you can manually install uh, your cutter directly into a collet. This type of cutter, for example, um, it won't suit automatic tool changing though, um, but it will give you that versatility uh, with, with a manual tool change. Well, that's probably enough for one video. Um, I wonder if you guys could give me some feedback on this subject and post it into the comments underneath. Um, are you planning to get a BT30 taper machine in the future? Uh, would you want to have a BT30 arbor on a probe, on, on an impact tolerant touch probe? Uh, would you like to have that available? Or would you rather have an adapter sleeve so that you can adapt the uh, the TTS arbor that's uh, current on the impact tolerant touch probe to a 30 taper. So it would be just a sleeve available. Um, also, would you be interested in a collet? This is a product I could manufacture in the future that would allow you to use TTS with BT30. Um, so that's another whole subject and I've been investigating different designs. Would that be of interest or uh, if you're moving away from R8 and the TTS system, are you going to stay away from it and you're just going to use BT30 and you don't want to have a collet? So there's all those sort of variables I'm considering. I really appreciate as many comments as possible on that subject. Thanks guys.